In order to win back her husband's heart, she turned herself into a golden lion. How crazy are these women to be beautiful? The woman in front of you is Jocelyn Wildens, born in 1945 in a remote mountainous area of Switzerland. When she was young, she was very beautiful. She was the envy of all the girls. But she loved shooting. She often went hunting alone in the mountains. She also ran a health club in a small town and lived a good life. Once when she was hunting in the mountains, she accidentally met a billionaire, Alex Wiltenstein, who was also hunting. They fell in love at first sight and soon married. They had two children. Jocelyn became a billionaire woman and lived a life of luxury. But in the days to come, Jocelyn found out that her husband often fooled around with his secretary. A woman's intuition told her, if this continues, the couple's relationship will soon be broken. In order to win back her husband's heart, Jocelyn made a crazy decision. She thought of her husband's love for lions. At that time, he was attracted to her because she was as wild as a lion. So she decided to have plastic surgery. She decided to become as heroic as a lion. After a number of plastic surgery, Jocelyn got what she wanted. To become like this. But what she didn't expect was that her current appearance didn't win her husband's heart. Instead, she had to fight with her husband every day. Jocelyn finally decided to divorce her husband. So she was also awarded $2.5 billion in severance pay. With the money, Jocelyn began to be crazy obsessed with plastic surgery. In order to make her face more wild, Jocelyn underwent several facelifts. Till 2018, because of the huge expenses on plastic surgery Jocelyn also went bankrupt. After living the life of a rich woman, she now lives on government grants. However, the next woman we're going to talk about. You'll be shocked by her appearance. Did you know that men can have babies too? You may not believe it, but it's true. Scientists have done an experiment and transplanted a cow's embryonic cells into a cow's brain. And the embryonic cells developed normally. In other words, that means the embryo could land and grow anywhere outside of the womb. Because embryonic cells are extremely parasitic, in addition to developing in the uterus. It can also form an ectopic pregnancy in the abdominal cavity, whether it's a man or a woman. As long as the placenta is supplied with enough blood and nutrients, it can survive. So, if you implant embryonic cells into a man's body, does that mean men can get pregnant too? In fact, back in May 2009, there was a case in the US where a man successfully gave birth to a child. He was also the first man to become pregnant and give birth to a baby. Men don't have a uterus. So how did he conceive a baby? This involves an advanced technology called artificial insemination. The principle is very simple. It only requires the male to inject androgens to regulate his body during the preparation period, to bring the body to a state where it is ready for pregnancy. Then the mature embryo cells are transferred into the man's body. And the best place for the embryo to develop is the mesentery, where the embryo will eventually grow and develop for 10 long months. But because of the differences between male and female reproductive organs, men can't give birth like women. So the only way for a man to give birth is to have a cesarean section. But after giving birth, many people wonder, what about breast milk for the baby? You may not know, men's mammary glands can also secrete milk. It's just that they need to use technology to stimulate their development. At this point, a man becomes a real baby daddy. So do you want your husband to get pregnant instead of you? Let me know in the comments section. Have you ever rubbed your eyes really hard and ended up seeing trippy colors and lights? Well, there's a pretty straightforward explanation for this. You see, we have these cells in our eyes that interpret our vision by sending signals to the brain. And when you rub your eyes, these cells get activated. They send a signal to the brain that you're seeing something, even though you aren't. So your brain just sort of adds these colors and lights into your vision because it thinks you're supposed to be seeing something. If a tuna fish stops swimming, it dies almost immediately. So if this is the case, then you might be wondering how they sleep. Well, it's difficult for scientists to study them because they are always moving. But they do know in order for the fish to pull in water through their gills, they must be in motion. This means that even when they are sleeping, they enter a low energy state to rest, but they never actually stop moving. You know when you make popcorn? 
popcorn and there's always a few kernels at the bottom that didn't pop? Well, most people think these unpopped kernels are a result of not cooking them long enough, but that's actually not true. You see, the reason kernels pop in the first place is because they contain a tiny amount of water that expands when heated. But some kernels contain too much water and some not enough. This results in them not popping, regardless of how long you cook them, which is what these kernels are in the bottom of your bag. Have you ever wondered why basketball hoops have nets? Well, some people think that it's meant to slow down the ball as it goes through, but that's actually not the real reason. You see, from certain points of a basketball court, it can be difficult to tell if the ball made it or not. So they added a net, which gives a visual and audible confirmation that the ball went through the hoop. Have you ever noticed how Converse have these extra holes on the side? Well, some people actually use them to lace up their shoes, but that's not exactly the intended purpose. You see, Converse originally created their shoes for athletes, and NBA players actually preferred them, partly because of how the shoes reduced sweat. And that's why Converse have these extra holes on the side. They make the shoe more breathable, providing ventilation. Have you ever wondered how a magnet works? Well, here's a painfully simple explanation. Magnets have these electrons that sort of work like miniature magnets. And when they're all aligned in the same direction, it creates a magnetic field that interacts with other magnets. This field is strongest around the ends, which are known as south and north poles. The north pole of one magnet attracts the south pole of another. And if you put the same poles together, they'll always push each other away. Have you ever wondered why brushing your teeth makes everything taste like sh**? Well, there's actually a pretty solid explanation for this. You see, your tongue is covered in proteins that act as receptors for taste. But there's one sneaky ingredient in toothpaste called SLS. SLS interferes with the proteins on your tongue. This impairs your ability to taste sweet flavors, replacing them with an unpleasant bitter sensation. If you pick your nose and eat your boogers, you're actually working against your body. You see, when you breathe in through your nostrils, the snot in your nose traps bacteria and viruses. And over time, the contaminated snot turns into boogers. Now, boogers are normally eliminated by sneezing, but when you eat them, you reintroduce the contaminated snot that your body defended against. This is an ampersand, and believe it or not, it used to be the 27th letter in the alphabet. You see, back in the day, this symbol came after the letter Z and signified the word and. But when reciting the alphabet, students weren't allowed to just say and after Z. Instead, they were taught to differentiate the symbol by saying per se before it. It sounded something like this, Q-R-S-T-U-V-W-X-Y-Z and per se and, and per se and, ampersand. Have you ever wondered why tennis balls come in sealed cans? Well, the reason for this is actually pretty important to the sport. You see, tennis balls are inflated with gas to maintain a specific pressure, and this gives it its signature bounce. But as soon as they're exposed to air, the gas slowly starts to leak. So manufacturers decided to package them in airtight cans to preserve that specific pressure. Have you ever wondered what this little smooth band is on the wheel of your lighter? Well, it's actually more important than you might think. You see, in the 90s, it had been reported that thousands of house fires were caused by kids playing with these lighters. So they added this band as a safety guard and placed it strategically on the wheel. This makes it harder to spin the wheel and ignite the flame, which is why most people just remove them. Have you ever wondered why it seems impossible to swat a fly? Well, believe it or not, it's actually because of their eyes. You see, flies have over 3,000 individual lenses on each of their eyes, and this allows them to process images much faster than we do, which makes our actions appear in slow motion to them. So by the time you go to swat the fly, it's already detected your motion and moved. How to move a couch into a room with a 90 degree corner? This seemingly simple geometric problem has plagued mathematicians for decades, and it's still unsolved. In 1966, mathematician Robert Romeser posed this problem in a paper. Suppose you have a hallway in your house with a 90-degree corner. 
The width of the hallway is one meter. What's the largest sofa you can fit in there? The first thing that comes to mind for most people is a square sofa that measures one square meter. Because it can be easily moved through the hallway by simply panning around. But you should know, you can actually rotate it. So this semicircular sofa can be easily moved into the room. And it has a surface area of 1.57 square meters. In that case, if you combine a semicircle with a square, wouldn't it also pass? A man named Hammersley did just that. He divided a semicircle into two halves and put the square in the center and cut a semicircle across the square. The sofa made it through the corridor and it exceeded the size of all the previous sofas. It's 2.2074 square meters. So this must be the largest sofa ever to pass through. For decades, many scientists thought the same thing until Joseph Gefford chamfered the semicircle of this shape and then added more area above. This sofa has a direct area of 2.2195 square meters. That's 0.5% larger than the Hammersley sofa. And it's the largest sofa ever found. So the seemingly simple question of the sofa seems to have a perfect explanation. But why is it still unsolved? So far, we're just guessing which shapes will fit and which ones won't. There are an infinite number of shapes. Hamersley's sofa proves that there are an infinite number of possible combinations of translational and rotational motion. So even if you find the largest sofa area, you'll never be able to prove that it's the biggest.